Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. In today's video, I want to show you how to make a succulent topped birdhouse. So I've already got one done. This is the first one I have ever made. So this one started off a natural wood color and I painted it a couple of fun colors with just some craft paints I had on hand and then filled the top with succulents. Um, the first time I ever saw this idea was from Cindy at the Succulent Perch. And I don't think that she sells these anymore, uh, but if you go to her Facebook page and look under her photos tab, you can see some of the most beautiful creations ever. They're so inspiring. And I've seen a few other people um, do these things as well. And I've done a lot with succulents, like attached to driftwood and rocks, but I'd never put them on top of a birdhouse before. So I thought I would give it a go. And after this first one was done, you know, there's always things that you would like to add or change. And I might add a few more plants. Like I think it could use a little bit more downward movement since this is so tall, but it's all stuff that, you know, you learn as you go and you can always add to it. So what I'm doing today is this one right here. So this one's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make this one a little bit more to my style. So I'm gonna be using a wood stain and make it look a little bit more, I, I don't know, like neutral colored. So I've got some Minwax wood stain in Early American and I'm gonna be staining the whole entire birdhouse with that. And then as far as the other supplies go, you would need a hot glue gun, sphagnum moss. This is the best kind of moss to use and really the only moss you need for this project. I do have a second kind of moss here. This is called forest moss, just for decorative purposes. And then I've got a piece of plastic. This is what's going to protect our roof from getting any water damage. And then I've got a couple of branches here, Scarlet Curls Willow, that I may use for decorative. And then on this side, I've got tacky gel glue because we are going to be attaching these succulents both with tacky gel glue and hot glue. You could use either or. And then I've got some succulents. So I've got some that are rooted that I'll be making cuttings of and then some that are already, already cuttings here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is stain the birdhouse and I'm just using a craft brush I had on hand. So you're gonna want to just use, you know, just quick brush strokes. I think it's only gonna take one coat of stain to get the look that I want. And we're gonna go ahead and stain the whole thing except for the top of the roof because we're gonna be covering that with succulents anyway. So the staining's all done and I think it looks really good. I love the color. So the next step is to create the moss roof. And this is what the succulents are going to uh, root into. So to do that, I use a piece of really thick clear plastic and I've cut it to size already. So you can see it kind of fits right there, right on top of the roof. So I'm just gonna set the house aside and set my piece of plastic down. And then I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and put a little bit of hot glue on the plastic. Now, since this is so thick of plastic, it won't melt. It'll shrivel a little bit, but that's okay. And then we'll take some sphagnum moss and attach it. So we're just gonna do that to the whole entire piece of plastic. So it looks like it's pretty much done, except for I'm gonna go around the outside and make sure I didn't miss any corners or edges, because you can see right there I missed one. So we'll put a little dab of glue and add a little bit more moss. Now I think that there's several different ways you can do the roof. Like you could go ahead and spray the top of the wood with like a, a waterproof sealer of some kind. I didn't have one here. So I just figured the plastic was fine because when we water this thing, it'll just hit the plastic and run off. And that's kind of what it would do even if it had a sealer on it. Um, so I think either way would work just fine. Okay, so then I'm gonna pick it up and kind of shake it to see how much excess I have here. We want it to be a nice thick layer because the thicker the layer of moss, the happier the succulent cuttings will be. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. See right there, I'm a little thin. So I'm gonna add just a bit more in that spot. Much better. So I'm all done with the moss. So now I just need to attach it to the roof. So to do that, I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun again. And I'm going to put hot glue on the entire top of the roof. Just like this. Other side. All right, this part's easy. So this part can be a little bit messy and that's just kind of the nature of sphagnum moss. So I'm gonna use my glue gun and just fill in a couple more areas where I notice it's thin. Um, there was a couple areas right toward the back. And then also, I got it a little bit far forward. You can see some of the plastic right here. So I'm gonna trim a little bit of it off on the front, just using a pair of sharp scissors. Just like that. Perfect. So now I'm gonna use a little bit of this forest moss. And like I said, this is not a necessary moss to have. I just like to use it because it's a little bit deeper green. 
So I'm just gonna use this around the edge just by using a little bit of hot glue and tucking it in just like that. And that way, if any of it pokes out around the succulents, it looks really pretty. So I'm just gonna continue doing this all the way around the edge of the roof. So the last thing I'm gonna do before I put the succulents on the roof is attach a couple of twigs. And this is probably gonna be the trickiest part of my entire project because these are a little squirrely. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a dot of hot glue right onto the back of the birdhouse, right about here. And I'm just gonna hold these in place for just a couple of minutes until they are completely dry. In fact, I'm gonna lay the birdhouse down. So while we're waiting on this glue to dry, I have to say it's a beautiful day out here in the greenhouse. It's 60 degrees and we're like beginning of January almost. I am six days away from our due date with our baby. Um, so I'm currently in the greenhouse wearing my slippers. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty comfortable. And it's highly possible by the time we get this video edited that we've already had the baby. We'll see how the timing goes on this thing. He seems to be pretty comfortable in there. All right, so now that it's all dry, and I did end up gluing it right up here as well, so down here at the base of the sticks and right here to the side of the roof, I'm gonna flip the house back up, and then I'm just gonna mess around with these branches until I like the way they swoop. I kinda want this kind of effect going on, but I think I'm gonna have to turn it around so it faces me so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, so I've been playing with this for a little bit and I did add a third branch because I think three looks a little bit better and I've swooped them around and I think what I'm gonna do is kind of glue them all right in this location right here while I'm holding it. So we'll see if I can get that done. And we can put a piece of moss over the top of this when it's all done to hide the glue. I think that's really pretty though. I think it adds a little bit of height and drama uh, to the arrangement instead of just having a big like poof of succulents at the top like my other one looks like. All right, so the branches are all done. So this is the first spot I glued the branches on. And you can see I glued a little bit of extra moss over the top just to hide kind of the mechanics. And then I twisted them around and glued them to the other side and then glued moss on the top. And I think that this gives it a really um, pretty appearance, like a lot of interest already. I think it's really cute. So we've got the soup that kind of comes all the way around and then this like kind of dramatic height right there. So the next step and last step actually is to put the succulents on. So what I've got here is an assortment um, of succulent cuttings that look like this. So this whole tray right here is just full of cuttings that I've had hanging out. And then I've got some rooted succulents here that I might be clipping off and using as cuttings. So in the end, everything that I put on top of this roof will be a cutting. And I'm going to be attaching them using two different kinds of glue. So the first kind is this tacky gel glue right here. You can get this at a craft store. This is a really good one to use for the succulents that are going particularly on the top because gravity will kind of keep the succulents in place because this does take a little while to dry. And then for the ones that I'm gonna attach like toward the edges and sides over here, I'm gonna be using hot glue. And I know that it looks like I'm hurting the plants, but hot glue does not hurt these cuttings one bit. All you use is a little dab. So we put a little dab right at the bottom and then we attach our succulent cutting and we just wanna make sure to nestle our cuttings in far enough to where the moss is covering a node. So a node is wherever a leaf meets the stem and you can see where I've popped off leaves along the way right here. There's just kind of little scars right there. That's where the uh, roots will appear. In fact, the cutting will actually produce roots right through the hot glue eventually as well. So we just wanna make sure that we nestle them in the sphagnum moss really well so that they have something to root into. So you don't wanna be putting the hot glue directly to the top of your succulent or on any of the leaves because it will burn the leaves, but it will not hurt the succulent to attach a little bit or to dab a little bit of hot glue onto the end and use it for anchoring purposes. It'll root in and do great. As far as where to find your succulent cuttings, I would check with your local garden center first. They're the best resource. Um, if you don't have a good local source, we will put a couple of links down in the description or comment section to a couple of online sources that are really good as well. So this is the first succulent I'm gonna use. I think that this bright blue is gonna look really pretty up against that darker wood stain. So I wanted to show you what I do with the hot glue. I'm just gonna put a little dab, it doesn't take a lot, just like that, and just nest it in. And we're just gonna have to hold it in for a few seconds until the glue dries, okay? That looks really good. So now with the tacky glue, I'm gonna use it on the bottom of the Semper Vivum, which actually already has a few little roots that I left on there. You don't have to leave the roots, it will form new ones, but I'm just gonna put a little bit on there like that and nest it in. Just like that, and it will 
adhere to the moss. So now all I'm gonna do is continue that process until the whole roof is filled up and I like the way it looks. All right, I got it all done and I did end up leaving moss showing all the way around just because I think it makes it look really soft and pretty. And then the branches just added a tremendous amount of interest, I think. I think that that is what kind of pushed this one over the edge and made, made me like it even more than the first one I did. Not to mention the color. I love the color of the stain. It's just a lot more my taste. And then the color of the succulents are all kind of muted. They're kind of deeper colors. The reds are more of a burgundy. Um, and then I used a little bit of chartreuse and then some of the blues in there. But I think the textures are really great. I think the Semper Vivum here is probably one of my favorites in this whole arrangement. That and these little tiny cacti. I think that added a little bit of extra visual interest there. Now I'm gonna go over a few care tips just real quick. So since we have all of these succulents and the moss mounted onto a piece of plastic, we can just go ahead and water it from overhead and all the water will shed off. It won't soak into the wood of the roof. So it'll um, help the arrangements last. You know, it won't ruin the, the birdhouse. How I do that is with a large syringe. You guys know if you've watched any of our succulent videos, this is how I prefer to water. So I just drop water in the syringe and that way I can direct it right to where I want it to go. I'm not gonna water this one today because I used a mix of both fresh cuttings and cuttings that were already dried on the ends. So I'm gonna give those fresh cuttings a couple of days, a ch you know, like a chance to dry and callus over. That way they're not open and susceptible to soaking in extra moisture and then possibly rotting. You can also water with a spray bottle. I've done that before to where you put the nozzle to where it kind of shoots a steady straight stream. And that's easy to direct toward the moss as well. And I do water these a whole lot more than I do regular potted succulents. So with a potted succulent, maybe indoors, like this time of year, I'd probably water it every 10 to 14 days. These I check a couple of times a week because I don't want that moss to get like bone dry. I wanna keep these plants um, a little bit on the moist side until they form root. Then they're a little bit more self-sufficient. The other super common question that I get asked about succulent arrangements is about how close I put my succulents together. Well, you have to kind of keep in mind that when you're using cuttings like this, they're gonna sit there for a couple of months. I mean, like two to three months forming new roots. So they're not gonna put on any new growth for several months and then they'll be focusing on forming roots and then it takes several months after that to where they'll actually start putting on new growth. So you can feasibly get at least a year out of an arrangement like this without having to remove a single succulent um, or do any kind of major overhaul. After that time, you may have to pop out one or two here and there just to create a little more room because all of these will have slightly different uh, growth rate. So if you've got one that's growing a little bit faster than the rest, you could pop that out and then give the other rooms a little the other ones a little bit more room to grow. Anyway, this was such a fun project. I really enjoyed doing it. I don't know what took me so long even giving it a try. I hope you guys give it a try. If you do, make sure to tag me in the picture so I can see it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.